Tell us what may be President Xi Jinping missing here. Well, I think, you know, we've seen over a period of time now, Xi Jinping is going around of all areas of the Chinese economy and society and trying to remold them as he sees fit in sort of, I think, in preparation for next year's party congress. Um, but he's certainly not an economist, and I don't think he fully appreciates the sort of the impact he's having, whether it be in private sector, whether it be in the economy more broadly, and certainly this, uh, how foreigners are viewing China as a stable place for business. And certainly when you look at property, that's been a huge driver of the Chinese economy over the past 20 years or so. So to fiddle with that mechanic, um, he's going to impact many areas of growth within China. He's going to impact local government finances, and he's certainly going to impact middle class finances. So are you saying that Evergrande could be a systemic risk or is it more about the broader approach to Evergrande as a property developer in the entire sector? So my question, I guess, is what could be the repercussions of what President Xi Jinping is doing? Sure. I don't think it's Evergrande per se that they'll ultimately be able to sort of take this acute crisis and make it into a chronic crisis, that they'll be able to ring fence certain things, they'll be able to make good certain investors and certainly in particular the, so the retail who put money down to buy properties. Um, you know, foreign bondholders or equity holders, they're way down the list of priorities. So I think they can sort of, to some extent, manage out the problems of Evergrande. But if your concern is about property in general, I say that's a huge component of GDP. Um, they complain about affordability. And of course, affordability is, you know, prices are extremely high, certainly in the big cities. But at the same time, if you want cheaper houses, that means the existing buyers are going to have a lot of losses. And that's going to cause social unrest. It's certainly going to cause pressure on bank finances, on individual finances, and certainly local government finances. So you start pulling at that model, however flawed it is, there's a lot of knock-on downstream effects. My question is, how do you address social stability as a key priority of the government, but also discourage moral hazard at the same time in an investing sense? Well, this the first thing you should have done was start addressing these areas, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago. It's not as if these are new problems that China is having to face. And basically, by more and more debt, um, in the system and more and more credit, they've been able to push off these problems into the far future, but the far future has now arrived. Um, I think one of their immediate concerns will be making sure that people who have put money down for houses ultimately see their properties being built and actually know they will get something at the end of it. But this is a huge problem that they face, that you can keep sort of bailing out companies or bailing out investors and at the same time not expect some degree of moral hazard. This is, as I say, why there's a lot of potential dangers for Xi Jinping as he tries to remold the entire Chinese society in, in some sort of idealistic image he has. So as you say, these are investments, you know, and, and, and policy results that have come home to roost right after many, many years. If it's not a Lehman moment, if it's not a Minsky moment for China, is the bigger concern the longer term drag on, on economic productivity? Should we be more concerned about just wastage and, and a lack of productivity in these assets for many years to come? I, I think that is it's a sort of stagnation type of case. It's this longer term case of slower growth trends, uh, less of innovation, less creativity, less profits, that you're basically spending a lot more sort of your assets and your resources mopping up your historic problems. Um, that already coupled in an a geopolitical environment, which is tougher on China, a demographic environment, which we know is tougher in China. And so that this, uh, the rosy Chinese future, which Xi Jinping hopes for, is certainly not going to be that rosy.